taking your basic electrical engineering class okay so starting uh, with the class that i did previously i'll just thoroughly not thoroughly i'll just uh, briefly explain uh, whatever we did in the previous class and that is about the uh, concept of the electric charge i have started with uh, the first module i can you can see the syllabus this is the syllabus for the first module so we have started uh, with module 1 dc circuits first uh, so today i'll uh, go to the first part of this module uh, which is ohm's law so before ohm's law again uh, previous classes revision i'll do just so it starts started with atoms i told you that what atoms are actually basic knowledge i think you already know that still i am just telling you atoms are nothing but the tiniest particles or the uh, the miniature version of any element which is composed of that is atoms are the smallest part of any element so it consists of the electrons protons and the neutrons so neutrons and protons are consisting of the nucleus and electrons are uh, moving in orbits around the nucleus so those orbits the electrons are moving those electrons can be added or removed but the nucleus inside the nucleus the uh, protons and neutrons cannot be removed because it requires a huge amount of force yes definitely we can do it uh, in that case nuclear energy can be extracted from that but uh, normally if we see in a normal uh, element there it is uh, difficult to remove the neutrons and protons from the nucleus so what we can do is we can remove or add electrons okay so for the electrons removal and adding of the uh, electrons we have something called charge because the electron is negatively charged the proton is positively charged so this balance is maintained in a atom that positive and negative balance each other and thus the atom becomes stable now for example an electron is removed or an electron is added then the atom does not remain in a neutral charge position so it gets charged either positively or negatively for example if we add an electron the atom becomes negatively charged if we remove an electron the atom becomes positively charged so this was about the atomic part now coming to the concept of electric charge so what happened <clears throat> this was our uh, definition of charge you can say charge is this addition or removal of electrons excess electrons in an atoms and that is known as charge so the atom is said to be charged if we add or remove any electron and charged atoms are known as ions now if by any means electron is removed then it loses the negative charge and the atom becomes positively charged and if an excess electron is added it will become negatively charged and it is known as anion also if it is positively charged it is known as cation if it is negatively charged it is known as anion now uh, moving to the electromotive force and current i told you that electro the effort that is required to drift the free electrons in one particular direction in a conductor is called electromotive force or emf and is measured in volts so the direction of this emf depends upon which how much the electric external uh, uh, electrical effort or the field is applied to the conductor means in which direction we are applying the field on that di direction it depends of the direction of emf or volts okay so uh, electrical effort to drift the free electrons in one particular direction in a conductor is called emf unit is volt now what is the difference between emf and voltage that i told you that emf is actually the electrical effort needed for going into a particular direction for the electrons now this electrical effort <coughs> is an effort now coming when uh, we see this picture that a conductor is given charge means conductor is connected across a battery then the direction of flow of the conventional current is actually opposite to the flow of electrons 
now when a free electron gets dragged towards the positive from an atom it becomes positively charged ion now this positively charged ion that you see plus plus signs are given there plus circle and inside the circle there is a plus those are the positively charged uh, atoms or uh, ions you can say so positively charged ion this ion drags the electron from the neighboring atom whatever the electron is there in the neighboring atom only it uh, tries to absorb that to become neutral only so if it continuously does that that just beside the neighboring atom it takes the electron then that atom also just be beside the neighboring atom it takes the electron then this electron absorption process continues and this is actually the flow of current the direction where the flow of electrons happens in that opposite direction is actually the flow of current okay so uh, i have written it in the note also you can see that the direction of conventional current is opposite to that of the direction of the flow of electrons okay so this is about uh, the direction part and also what exactly electric current is because we know here in this slide that uh, electric current is nothing but the opposite flow in the direction of the electrons now coming to the relation between charge and current you see the relation between charge and current uh, mathematically is uh, described here uh, because charge if we represent it as q then uh, current is i then i is equals to q by t where q is the charge t is the time required for the transfer of charge now hence we can define this that uh, the relation between charge and current is current can be defined as the rate of flow of charge in a electric circuit in any medium in which the charges are subjected to an electric field external electric field and also uh, the unit of current is amperes mathematically we can express it as i equals to q by t now what is this ampere means how can we define ampere one ampere means the quantity of one ampere the unit of ampere can be defined as that a current of one ampere is said to be flowing in the conductor when the charge of one coulomb is passing any given point on it in one second so in one second if one coulomb passes then we can say that as 1 ampere okay it's charge by time charge divided by time the unit so here is our relation about charge and current next is electric potential very important because this is where the difference i'll see i'll uh, tell you about uh, the difference between voltage and uh, emf or electromotive force so electric potential uh, what is that you see we uh just uh, studied about the charged particle or the charged atom ions <clears throat> so every charged particle has this tendency to work what is that work to attract or to repel the electrons or any particle okay so attraction and repulsion attraction and repulsion of any charged particle is actually its work that is done so this ability of a charged particle to do work is called its electric potential so uh, we see basically electric potential is nothing but the work that is done by that charge so work that is done by ch that charge is the electric potential and the unit is volt again okay earlier emf was electromotive force its unit was also volt it was the effort okay because you see work and energy have the same units so it is similar to here because that effort is equivalent to this work basically so that is why the units are also same now this electric potential is actually mathematically it can be uh, represented as um, you see work done divided by charge or it's it written here w by q work done divided by charge now what is actually this work done how can we say that uh, this attraction and repulsion which is the work done uh, how this uh, potential works 
so this electric potential at a point due to the a charge is 1 volt okay this is the definition of 1 volt we can say so 1 volt if 1 joule of work is done in bringing 1 unit positive charge of 1 coulomb from infinity to that point okay from infinity to that point that work done is called 1 volt okay so the electric potential at a point due to a charge of 1 volt is actually 1 joule of work done in bringing that unit positive charge of 1 coulomb from infinity to that point okay so this is about our 1 volt definition now potential difference what is that this potential difference is termed as voltage that we will study in electrical voltage so in electrical circuits the flow of current is always from higher potential to lower potential like floor wise the height obviously water flows from a greater height to a lower height smaller height according to the elevation according to the altitude okay so this uh, difference or we can say that uh, this flow flow of water can be or flow of any fluid can be equivalently compared to the flow of current okay because current also flows from a higher electric potential to a lower electric potential so in electrical circuits flow of current is always from higher electric potential to lower electric potential and this difference between the two potential higher and lower okay this difference between the two potentials at any two points is given by potential difference and this is called voltage this potential difference is called as voltage between two points and is measured in volts v okay so this is about our potential difference now uh, just uh, note it is here written as just note that to maintain the flow of electrons means the flow of electric current there must be some potential difference there must exist a potential difference between the two points and no current can flow if the potential difference between the two points is zero means for the flowing of current you need a potential difference or a voltage a voltage must exist then only current can exist i hope it is clear now okay so now we will move on to today's class uh, audible and the video visible to all please respond yes ma'am yes ma'am yes ma'am yes ma'am okay, fine yes ma'am thank you yes ma'am so uh, for today this was still your brush up i can say or the revision of the previous class now i'll move on to the basic actually the basic of basic electrical we can say that is the circuit elements that we will study circuit elements okay till now we have studied about what voltage is and what electric current is okay now we have the circuit elements we will study those elements are components of a circuit of any circuit those elements must be present in a circuit that will uh, actually bear all the laws and all the problems that we will be solving from now onwards so any circuit we are being familiar now uh, with the circuits what circuit is what circuit uh, actually uh, the elements of the circuit are these things so i'll just move on to the circuit elements for today's class see <coughs> first active components there are two things active and passive active components of circuit elements these are those elements which inject the power into a circuit and are capable of controlling the flow of electric current okay means for any circuit element there must be some source of power or something that will be giving the power supplying the power means power supply kind of thing so these are the elements that will give or supply the power into a circuit and are capable of controlling the flow of electric current 
if the supply obviously they are controlling the flow of current so basically it is a source maybe a voltage source maybe a current source anything those are the supply of power or they inject power into the circuit and are capable of controlling the flow of current so this is our active component now example you see it is given energy sources that this may be ac or dc okay both dc and ac can be energy sources now energy sources what are they they are like amplifiers for ac it is like uh, transistors diodes triodes vacuum tubes we will see that uh, what the symbols are uh, and how they look like we will see in eventual classes so first let us just define these things what is active component these are the energy sources basically so energy sources again can be classified into voltage sources and current sources so there are two types of energy sources okay and these are obviously active elements or active components okay so these two types of uh, energy sources they are the voltage source and current source they again can be classified into ideal or practical sources so we will uh, just uh, study about that meanwhile let us know what are the passive components or passive elements uh, everyone is getting any questions or doubts excuse me ma'am yes please ma'am what do you mean by voltage source voltage source is something uh, that provides the voltage for example uh, i showed you uh, that conductor while the conductor was connected to a source in previously i showed you in the diagram just let me see this diagram you see yes ma'am okay here you see the supply or the source this uh, positive and negative side is given battery and battery battery right right, right. exactly battery. exactly okay. no oh. battery is Thank for you. dc i told you now both dc and ac can be available batteries are yes. dc dc sources of voltage voltage source okay so battery is a example of voltage source so i just showed you with this diagram what exactly they are we will definitely further study more in diagrams and everything so i am just defining things means in this circuit the battery that you are seeing that cell thing this is the voltage source and uh, obviously if it is battery it is dc okay ma'am can you give yes, example of ac ac source yes i told you that uh, transistors and diodes i don't know you have studied in uh, 11 12 or not but i think you have not but we will eventually see what diodes are diodes are mainly electronic devices or in electronics you will study about that diodes triodes transistors those are examples of ac energy sources okay any any okay, questions any questions uh, okay so moving on with this this was our active components okay whatever you saw the power supply the voltage the batteries those are our examples of voltage sources uh, or active components they are also called now coming to the passive components passive elements or passive components so you see passive components are not capable of supplying power means they do not uh, give power they absorb power or they consume it or store it okay means the battery is giving out power it is the source right and something must be there to absorb it right so that is our passive components they are not capable of injecting or controlling the flow of current they either consume it or store the energy store the electrical energy so examples of these are resistors capacitors inductors transformers and many any uh, many are there actually for now you just concentrate on resistors capacitors inductors 
resistors is the uh, passive component or resistance if you have heard of resistance have you uh, heard of resistance yes ma'am yes ma'am yes yes uh, are you familiar with ohm's law ओरिजिन ऑफ रेजिस्टेंस वट रेजिस्टेंस एक्चुअली इज सो दिस विल बी द फर्स्ट थिंग ऑफ आवर मॉड्यूल विच इज ओम्स लॉ एंड वाइल आई एम टेलिंग यू ऑल दिस बिकॉज active component is something if they ask you if any any uh, where you can see that active elements or active components you will immediately understand it is something that gives the power or the supply of power like a battery like uh, uh, diodes transistors those things okay and immediately if they say the passive elements they are obviously resistors capacitors which either absorb power they consume the power or store the power those things so something which gives the power active and something which receives or absorbs or uh, we can say consumes or stores that is our passive elements so this is about active and passive elements now i'll just go on to the next thing i told you here you see that energy sources can be voltage source and current source and these voltage and current source also individually can be ideal source or practical sources right they can be further classified as ideal sources and practical sources now here we will move on to the ideal source and practical source let us first define what ideal source is okay ideal source uh, of voltage rather is defined as the energy source which gives the constant voltage across its terminals irrespective of the current drawn through its terminals means kya matlab hai iska in in a very easy words i am telling you ideal condition means ideal voltage source is that where the voltage is constant there is nothing called a uh, resistance it has means the voltage source this one the circle that you are seeing vs written this is a voltage source okay so this voltage source has no internal resistance that is ideal in ideal case voltage source will have no passive thing uh, means resistance or resistive part it will be entirely active and it will never consists of any uh, internal resistance it is fully uh, giving constant voltage means there is no resistance in ideal condition the voltage source so ideal voltage source are defined as those energy source which have which gives constant voltage across its terminals irrespective of whatever current is drawn through it okay so current is il you see our current il is given and vl is the load voltage load side voltage vs is the supply side voltage vl is the load side voltage and il is the current load current so according to the ideal voltage source this kind of voltage source which will only uh, give the constant voltage have no internal resistance ideally these voltage sources will have this kind of graph which is constant where vl and vs you see the diagram vl and vs will be same because the load voltage will be same as the source voltage because it has no internal resistance okay you see the voltage will be same in that case okay so uh, in ideal condition ideal voltage sources are like these but it does not exist practically means in practical every voltage source has a small amount of internal resistance and i'll show you now what that is ideally means ideally the picture is like this but practically the picture is like this practically the picture is like this what happens practically the load voltage is not same as the source voltage because why 
there is some re resistance internal resistance that is present you see rse is written over there rse so rse is the series resistance or any amount of internal resistance that is present so according to the practical ones means it is unlike the ideal source here we see that due to the rse or the resistance that is present in the uh, in the supply side it is written as rse in the load side it is written as rl you see rl is written so in this case this will vary means the load voltage will not be the uh, same as the source voltage and our graph will be like this our graph will be like this that the practical ones vary from the ideal ones okay ideal ones the practical ones uh, vary and that gives rise to our deviation from the practical case ideal case to practical case okay any questions regarding this and actually what is difference between uh, voltage source and uh, load voltage man? okay good yes voltage source is uh, our active element as i told you voltage source is active element okay and load voltage vl that you see here this side vl load voltage load voltage is the voltage across that element that passive element you see load is always uh, the rectangular thing that i i have drawn you see this rectangular thing is the load okay so load can be anything like load can be capacitors load can be inductors load can be resistors load can be any passive element okay so across okay. that passive element what your voltage drop is means how much it is consuming what is the potential difference or the drop of voltage across the load that is your vl load voltage and it depends upon what type of load it is resistive capacitive inductive that is our voltage drop or load voltage you can say okay man okay okay uh dheere dheere it will be clear more because i'll be going to the problems also you'll understand very well uh for now on it is just a definition i can see okay i am just defining before it gets more complicated so simple things i am just def defining first now um this is about the ideal and practical case although it is uh, not much of a means it's a easy one not a very something to be worried about because practically all the voltage sources have this internal resistance it's not never uh, linearly uh, varying with each other it's not that the it uh, voltage is constant as in the previous case you saw it was a just flat line right uh, but in case for practical source it was a slanted line so it is not that in case of ideal source it's ideal practically it is always that the small internal resistance is present across it okay i'll just i just defined it because in case anyone asks you about ideal voltage source that you can define that what is the difference between the ideal and the practical ones okay this is about our voltage source same in current source see voltage source is defined uh, or it is drawn like this plus minus like the battery sign plus minus now current source is something like this in current source also we will see about the ideal and the practical ones see this is the symbol of current source just an arrow arrow inside a circle is it visible to all smith yes, okay fine so you see current source is represented by this circle and inside that circle an arrow okay in the upward direction so uh, this is called current source we represent like this so current source is also the same kind uh, we can say that current uh, ideal current source is the source which gives the constant current at its terminals 
irrespective of the voltage appearing across its terminals okay so ideal voltage source is the source which gives the constant current at its terminals irrespective of the voltage appearing across its terminals let me explain in plain word plain and simple words you see the current source is given and across the current source if the same current flows the theory is same if the load current il is equals to is means there is the same current flowing nothing dropping or no uh, passive element is there then no internal resistance is there that means it is giving the constant current at the terminals low terminals means as i said il is equals to is then the curve is like this okay the graph is is equals to il which is the vi characteristics we can say so this one this ideal voltage source again i uh, ideal current source again does not exist in practical sense practically every current source has a high internal resistance which is in parallel with the current source and it is represented by rsh now that is also given in just parallel just see this earlier in case of voltage source rse was in series now rsh is in parallel to the current source and we can say uh, why it is parallel because because of rsh the current through its terminal decreases okay and uh, slightly with the increase of the voltage at its terminals now rsh is in parallel because uh, we will later also see that uh, current source in parallel with a resistance is equivalent to voltage source in series with a resistance okay anyone having any questions about that am i audible yes ma'am yes ma'am okay so uh, i'll just briefly say that this uh, earlier the voltage was in series means the voltage source was in series with the resistance and here the resistance rsh is in parallel with the is or the current source so current source in parallel with the resistance or internal resistance that gives our uh, internal or in practical sense how the current sources work and here also there is a deviation from ideal to practical from the graph if you can see the graph here also ideal and practical deviate itself from the fact that in ideal case il was equals to is means the load current was equals to the supply current or source current current source uh, and in case of practical it is not the same uh, because of the resistance rsh is present and because of rsh you see the rsh the current through its terminal decreases slightly with the increase in voltage at its terminal so this is also uh, in the case where just note this two things that in case of voltage in case of voltage for ideal voltage source rse is equals to 0 and practical voltage source it is as small as possible and for current for ideal current source rsh is infinity while for practical current source it is as high as possible always remember these two points this is something very 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 important okay in future also you will see whenever you are working with current source and voltage sources the ideal voltage source rse is equals to 0 and practical voltage is as small as possible whereas for rsh rsh the current source for ideal current source rsh is equals to infinity and for practical current source it is as high as possible okay so this uh, everything i'll give in the notes in, in our group but uh, let me just explain you in detail 
so this was about our current source and voltage source next we will directly move out to our something called a very uh, familiar with you so resistance okay so resistance uh, i hope you just said that you know still i'll just uh, tell you it is actually the property which opposes the current okay just let me define this so the property of an electric current that opposing the flow of current at the same time property of the electrical circuit that opposes the flow of current and at the same time causes the electrical energy to be converted to heat energy is called resistance so what is resistance resistance uh, is basically the property that opposes the flow of current and at the same time it converts the electrical energy to heat energy this is called resistance now higher the availability of the free electrons lesser will be the opposition to the flow of current means kya on this high the current flows less will be the opposition means less is the resistance so more is the resistance less current flows higher resistance means just tell me uh, anyone understood what i said yes ma'am yes so if i say just ask you higher resistance means what is the current flowing high or low uh, low low, low. low ma'am right. low right so and low is the resistance what is the current flow i will be high high high, high. high. Oh, right okay fine thank you so this is about our resistance now denoting the resistance by r we generally denote resistance by r and it is measured in ohms ohm is the unit of resistance so one ohm can be defined as the resistance of a circuit in which a current of 1 ampere generates the heat at the rate of 1 joule per second that is said to be 1 ohm so this is about the definition of 1 ohm now coming to the factors that affect the resistance what are the factors that affect resistance anyone i have already written i think you have uh, you know it you have studied in earlier also it is the length of the material the cross sectional area the type of material and the temperature okay so length of the material resistance is directly proportional to the length of the material which is l cross sectional area is inversely proportional with resistance or resistance is inversely proportional to the cross sectional area which is r is proportional to 1 by a 1 divided by a type of material on this factor also resistance depends what is the type of material whether it is a conductor or an insulator on that type also it depends and the temperature temperature factor is also there so if we want to write on the basis of the following factors what will we write about the resistance that r is proportional to l by a okay so r is proportional to l by a now uh, coming to the uh, fact that what we will do to make the proportional sign equals to means to make the proportion turn into equal to we have this constant called rho you see a p like structure that is rho and rho is uh, basically nothing but the resistivity now uh, we will go in detail about rho resistivity and uh, its subsequent uh, just the inverse of resistivity is called conductivity we will go on to that later so conductivity and resistivity are two things uh, on which we can have problems also problem sums so we will uh, do that later uh, first let us just uh, uh, know about what the term is the notation or the equation for resistance it is rho l by a rho l divided by a okay now uh, let's move on to the origin from where we get resistance it is nothing but ohm's law very 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 important for you all uh, ohm's law as you have told that you have studied uh, i am just stating the statement of ohm's law it states that 
the current flowing through the electric circuit is directly proportional to the potential difference across the circuit and inversely proportional to the resistance of the circuit provided the temperature remains same or remains constant anyone uh, who is not having an idea of ohm's law anyone anyone who is not understanding ohm's law anyone okay uh, am i audible to you all yes ma'am yes ma'am yes, ma okay yes ma'am so moving yes, on with the ohm's law okay thank you so ohm's law gives basically what it does it gives the relationship between the potential difference that is v and the current that is i and also the resistance is introduced here which is r okay so uh, we have that this relationship between uh, potential difference and the current mm, so we define it by v and i mathematically we can write it as like this i is proportional to v by r generally whenever i ask any one uh, students uh, in uh, later also after studying basic also that define what is ohm's law they always say v equals to ir no v is equals to ir definitely but it is not actually ohm's law ohm's law is i equals to v by r you see the statement it says that the current flowing the current flowing through the electric circuit is proportional to the potential difference it does not say that the potential difference is proportional to the electric uh, current there is difference in that okay so the statement is a statement no alteration of a statement of a law when you are giving the statement of a law it should be same it should not vary okay so ohm's law um it states like this that i is to be proportional to v by r so this thing i is proportional to v by r we convert this proportional sign to equal to sign by considering that the unit potential difference is defined in such a way that the constant of proportionality is unity means that we define the constant of proportionality as unity only so if we take 1 1 1 values of which r will be all, always be equals to 1 okay so if i equals to 1 uh, v equals to 1 r is also going to be equal to 1 so this is our definition or uh, law of uh, statement of the ohms law it can also be defined like uh, the ratio of the potential difference between any two points of a conductor to the current flowing between them is constant provided that the temperature of the conductor remains constant always remember this one okay because uh, temperature thing if you miss temperature and other physical conditions remaining constant you can say that the current flowing through the electric uh, electric circuit is proportional to the potential difference so always remember not to miss the temperature thing the parameter of temperature remains constant is compulsory in the statement never miss that okay so this is about our ohms law now something which is not defined in ohms law can you tell me just uh, the thing here it is stated that two points uh, means the potential difference across the circuit or uh, uh, across the two points in a conductor it is said right so there is this thing called conductor written so if it is a non conductor ohms law will not be applied so we go to the limitations of the ohms law limitations of the ohms law says that the first two these two are the limitations the first is it is not applicable to non linear devices like diodes zener diodes voltage regulators etc what are these non linear devices anyone can say uh, uh, what the term non linear means
what does the term just the term non linear what is the meaning and um, it means it does not have any uh, like relation between current and voltage does uh, does not have any relation what did you say just man something uh, which does not have end points uh no uh, you were very close actually uh, let me just tell you it will not have linear relation with current and voltage means a non linear relation between voltage and current means between v and i what did we see that the curves between vi characteristic that we just i am just uh, going to the slide see the curves these are linear curves like a straight line right whether it is slanted or not it is actually a straight line following right do you understand what i am saying that this vi characteristic this is a straight line here also and here also whether it is slanted the slope is different but it is a straight line right yes right see one is with respect to time they are linear or not means linearly varying with respect to time or not and another is the vi characteristic that is linear or not so when we do not have linear relationship linear relationship is what when uh, we do have this um, have you uh, studied about the coordinate geometry anyone yes so yeah. there there yes, you have studies equals to y equals to mx yes ma'am yes ma'am y equals to mx you know right yes ma'am so here y and x are linear y and x are linear they are varying linearly suppose suppose if it was y equals to mx plus c then it is not linear do you understand what is the difference then non linear Excuse me. Yes, yes, please. A non-linear is basically a curve, right? Curve, obviously curve, but in a straight line also, there can be relations which are non-linear when they do not vary non-linearly. There are two things you see. One is if it is a curve, like uh, if it is a square, it is not linear. It is square, cube. uh like that that we can also define it as non linear and at the same time if we have the term something associated with each other means plus something then in that case also it is non linear we can say since our relationship here for the resistance part we can say these are linear relationships so here the ohms law will be valid coming to the limitations again okay so for the limitations part non linear devices such as diodes zener diodes voltage regulators these are something which uh, have non linear relationship means if you see the vi characteristics or how they vary with time if you see that graph or if you see their terminologies it is to the power something to the power something to the power plus something okay i am not going into detail because uh, uh, that will take something different because diodes and uh, regulators and transistors these are electronics part still i am just explaining you those are the non linear devices okay resistors linear devices resistance is linear so resistance is something which is linear and ohms law is valid for that okay now coming to the non metallic as i was telling it does not hold good for non metallic conductors such as silicon carbides this example they can ask you what are the limitations of ohms law and in which case 
in case of silicon carbide how is it not valid how does ohm's law does not hold good for silicon carbide so for silicon carbide you see the relation the law for such conductors is given by v equals to ki to the power m where k and m are constants okay so everyone understood about the limitations part yes ma'am okay yes ma'am fine so i'll end today's class with this only ohm's law in the next class i'll be giving problems uh, and uh, also we will be solving so ohm's law is something uh, with which our mathematical thing begins so study this thing very well and uh, all the best for this uh, class because for this class i uh, study this class very well you note down and one thing more that i uh, didn't tell you i'll i'll be providing the syllabus in detail to the group uh, i hope everyone is uh, there in the group by now so apart from the syllabus i'll also share uh, some pdf notes and whichever the class i am telling uh, taking so i'll just like to tell you one thing that whatever notes i am giving to you uh better you take a separate copy for this basic electrical and you take down the notes in such a way that when you come to the class for offline mode those things are available in the book in the note in your copy by your own handwriting only so that it will be easier for you to refer in case the offline classes begin and i'll also check for you all that everyone does it at the same time okay i'll check everyone's copy whether these are there provided and while writing down also you will realize what are the queries that naturally you are having so uh, that is the thing that you should go on okay so uh, i hope everyone is clear with that any confusion yes, any questions yes, please tell yes ma'am Okay. Yes. Any question? Ma'am, can you please go to the last limitation slide? I have a doubt. Okay. Yes. Yes. Tell. Ma'am, in that last Ohm's law v equal to k i raised to power m. Right. Ma'am, where did the resistor go? Because this here, is a non-conductor. Here is the constant. No. High resistor. Right? Here, here, it does not hold good for. the ohms law so here in place of r you have the k r is, r was the proportionality constant we, we can say in case of the uh, ohms law but here since there is no resistance resistance is linear right this is non linear so we do not have r resistance in place of that we have k yes i got it thank you okay 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 anyone else any questions please okay i think everyone is clear with this class also uh, go through it write it down in your notebook basic electrical a separate notebook so uh, i'll see that and in the next class we will move on to the problems of the ohms law okay i'll be sending the notes and everything of this class in the group just now so uh, just see that okay i am leaving this class you can also leave thank you everyone for participating thank you thank you ma'am thank you ma'am thank you ma'am ma okay you may leave i am leaving thank you thank you ma'am